Hey, this is DFS Matt, and today we're looking at the five worst defenses in the NFL and how you can target them in DFS to win your lineups. So let's jump right into it. So the worst defense in football is the Carolina Panthers. Now they've added a few key players like Derek Brown, Brian Burns, Troy Pride Jr., and Jeremy Chin. Uh, but overall, they're still the worst defense in the league right now. They have one of the best safeties with Trey Boston, who is still one of the league's best pure deep safeties, and has been mentioned as the sixth most valuable safety since 2017. So the deep ball, it won't be very effective against Trey Boston. Both Dante Jackson and Eli Apple are listed as their corners and uh, are very low ranked. So expected to be able to pick up quite a bit of uh, yardage on the corners. I would choose to attack this defense with quick routes and the running game as well. In week one, the Carolina Panthers are up against the Las Vegas Raiders, so I'm expecting Joshua Jacobs to get a lot of action and a lot of fantasy points in week one. Next up, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars, who already seem like they're ready to tank the entire season. They had to get rid of Fournette, and pretty much everybody's gone from this team. Looks like they're really trying to tank to get the uh, Clemson quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. We definitely think this is the right thing to do going forward for the Jacksonville Jaguars. There's really only a few rays of hope out of this defense. We got defensive back DJ Hayden, who is starting to look like a first-tier defensive back. Since coming to Jacksonville, he's produced the 10th best slot coverage grade, so don't target this defense too much with the slot man. I don't expect their pass rush to be too effective, even with Josh Allen. And Jacksonville made a pretty good pick in the draft with C.J. Henderson as one of their cornerbacks, but I don't expect their pass defense to be very effective. I expect this team to be terrible out of the gate and continue to be really terrible throughout the season and probably even get worse. In week one, they're up against the Indianapolis Colts, and I expect the Colts to really showcase their passing game in the new year. I really will look forward to seeing how Phillip Rivers is going to pick apart the defense with T.Y. Hilton and also quite a few to targets to Jack Doyle. If you're looking for a game to stack on one side only, I would definitely recommend taking a shot at the Indianapolis stack, putting together Phillip Rivers, T.Y. Hilton, and Jack Doyle on this one, without running any players back on the other side. Next up we have a Giants, but the Giants are in the main slate, so I'm going to skip over them and go to the Washington football team. Washington actually has a really decent defensive line. It's actually one of the best in the NFL. It's led by Chase Young. Chase Young is actually one of the best pass rushers in a while. He'll be paired up with Ryan Kerrigan, Matt Lonitis, who are also very good pass rushers. So I expect their run defense is really going to be amazing. A lot of teams aren't going to choose to target the Washington football team through run. The linebackers, the, the cornerbacks, and the safeties are all suspicious. So I expect a lot of teams to choose to attack the Washington football team through the air. Both cornerback Ronald Darby and safety Landon Collins need to get back into shape be, to be able to be an effective defense against the pass. In week one, Washington's up against the Eagles. This is a great spot for Carson Wentz to attack with Deshaun J Jackson and also Zach Ertz. That's a great stack to look in. This is another game where I would consider stacking the offense on one team, but I wouldn't even consider running it back the other way. I don't see how the other team can get any offense against uh, the Eagles in this space. Next up, we have the Atlanta Falcons. The yeah, Fa Falcons have some pretty good uh, defensive line with one of the better interior defensive linemen in the NFL and Grady Jarrett. He's produced back-to-back -back amazing seasons, and we expect him to continue forward this year. The defensive line isn't amazing, but, I mean, it's good enough. It's not nearly as bad as their secondary, which is one of the worst in the league. In 2020, I expect that Atlanta's secondary is going to be attacked ruthlessly. When opposing teams come to Atlanta, this is going to be a chance for them to show off their quarterbacks and their wide receivers. I expect that if you were to stack Atlanta Falcons games week in, week out, you would uh, expect to be in good contention to win the Mo Maker multiple times throughout the season. Ideally, you'll be playing two pass catchers on one side, one pass catcher on the other, and the quarterback with the two pass catchers. In week one, I already mentioned stacking Atlanta in my previous videos, 
but I also think this is an amazing spot for a Seattle Seahawks stack. In my opinion, an amazing way to play this would be to run Russell Wilson's targeted with Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf and then run it back the other way with Julio Jones or Calvin Ridley depending on how much money you have available in your roster construction. Finally, we have the Arizona Cardinals. With them, they have a pretty mediocre defensive line. It's ranked about middle of the pack. However, their secondary should be a lot better than it was last year. They need a bounce back year from Patrick Peterson. He missed quite a bit of 2019, but hopefully he can get back into game shape for this year. Also, they need Byron Murphy to, to play a lot better than he did last year. Hopefully he stays in the slot because he did a little bit better in that position versus outside. Uh, but we need to see a lot better season from him this year. Overall, there is quite a bit of gaps in this defense, so there's plenty of room to attack. First week, they're up against the 49ers. Now, the 49ers have an amazing backfield with Raheem Mozart, Tevin Coleman, and Jarek McKinnon. I have no idea which one's going to be coming out of that one or what's going to be happening there. So, I do think that this will be a blowout game, though. On San Francisco's end, they should win by... Uh, at least seven or more points and I think they'll really slow down the game with the run game and really use that to their advantage so I expect this game to go under as well and not have a huge points total for it. San Francisco has one of the best defenses in the game so I think they're going to be shutting down Arizona quite considerably. They'll get to a good lead and then they'll shut down this game with the run game. Overall I expect it to be pretty low scoring uh, with an easy win for San Francisco. Out of all these five games, I have players from each of these games targeted in my lineups. To recap the players I'm targeting, for the Las Vegas Raiders, I'm targeting Josh Jacobs as the running back. For the Indianapolis Coat, I'm targeting the passing game with Phillip Rivers, T.Y. Hilton, and Jack Doyle. For the Seattle Seahawks, I'm targeting Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett, and D.K. Metcalf. For the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm targeting... Miles Sanders, Carson Wentz, Zach Ertz, and Deshaun Jackson. So I'll have quite a bit of each team when building my lineups. Thanks for watching today's episode. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you could like and subscribe, that really helps me out. So make sure to do both. And I'll be back tomorrow with new uh, information for week one of the NFL fantasy season. Thanks again.